Bridgeport Port Jefferson Ferry Company. And we're backing out of the Port Jeff Port. And listen to those engines. There was some argument as to what kind of engines they were. One person said a Caterpillar, but I asked the first mate on the con and he said it was General Motors. Judging by the sound, I can believe that. It sounds like an idling SD60. the Long Island Sound up to the state of Connecticut. On the proper method to don and wear a personal flotation device, commonly called a life jacket. We're being delayed leaving the Port Jeff Harbor and this is the culprit right here. This tug hauling, uh, I don't know if that's gravel, coal, looks more like gravel. position. It was an impressive ride across. We were delayed leaving Port Jeff because of a barge that was coming into the harbor and we had to stop but once we went going in spite of that we still got here on time. He's due in here at 920. I got 919. It's gonna be a little bit late when he docks but I have plenty of time to catch my 940 Metro North train to New Haven. from Long Island to do things. This is really a nice, relaxing way to do it. It's a shortcut. Just drive from my house to Port Jeff. Takes about 45 minutes. Get on a boat and come straight up here. Get on Amtrak or Metro North. In the summertime especially, it's really nice to do. Doing a nice job lining it up, just about ready to dock. accomplished. Connecticut Land Ho! And we've arrived at the Metro North Station, which is just a short walk from the ferry. Combination Metro North Amtrak is this Kawasaki M8 pulls in for his run to Grand Central. These MUs are loaded with electronic equipment. Indeed, they need it. They're very diversified cars. They can run on 
different kinds of AC voltage and they can run on DC voltage with overrunning and underrunning third rail. As diversified as these things are, they will not be able to operate on the AC catenary going into Penn Station when Metro North starts operating trains in the Penn Station after the East Side Access Program is opened. There they have to use the overrunning third rail, so these cars are not quite perfect. <laughs> Indeed. Many Metro North engineers will swear that they're not perfect. These cars are similar to the M9s on the Long Island Railroad in appearance somewhat, but a lot more sophisticated than that because of their multi-use capabilities. We're here to catch a train to New Haven where I'll be connecting to a Shoreline East train of M8s. The M8 started running on Shoreline East this past Tuesday, May 31st. They operate between New Haven and New London, Connecticut. City in Connecticut. Track arrangement from right to left, I believe, is 4213. This is the train to New Haven. The next station is Stratford. about these M8s is that every row of seats has an electrical outlet. Yeah, these cars have really good acceleration. East Bridgeport Metro North facility, small yard on the other side.
use the train, please watch the gap between the train and the platform. Connecticut. Stratford, England is the birthplace of William Shakespeare and every Stratford in the world has a Shakespeare theater but Stratford, Connecticut doesn't. Some rather uncultured person decided he didn't like Shakespeare and he decided to burn the Shakespeare theater down here. This is the train to New Haven. The next station is Milford. sound meant. We're approaching uh, interlocking CP261. All interlockings on the New Haven line are preceded by a 2 to differentiate between the Harlem and Hudson lines. And we're roughly 61 miles from Grand Central. Satanic River we're passing over.
Okay, this interlocking used to be referred to as Devon. The track you see curving off is Metro North's line to Waterbury. That's a trip for another time. Served by several trains a day. Supposedly, the service to Waterbury will increase in the summertime. Here's the old Devon Tower. Back in New Haven days, the New Haven ran freights out of Cedar Hill in New Haven, up the Waterbury branch as far as Derby Shelton, then they'd strike off to the northwest towards Danbury, and ultimately Maybrook Yard. They go over the Poughkeepsie Bridge, which is now the walkway over the Hudson hiking trail. That's the track those freight trains used to take, the west leg of the Y. CP-261. Tell me what the purpose of that sound is. Here's milepost 61. poking along here. There we go. The inmates are using their rapid acceleration capabilities as my back is being pushed into the red seat cushion. They really are nice looking cars. I love the red and white seat seats inside. I kind of feel the way I do about these cars, the way I feel about the Silverliner 5s. Silverliner 5s are attractive, rapid accelerating cars, like these are. But a lot of people in the railroad industry don't expect a lengthy service life out of these cars as well as the Silverliner 5s. Compared to other multiple unit cars, these cars are loaded with all kinds of electronic equipment. are expanding their range since this last Tuesday. Military. As you leave the train, please watch the gap between the train and the platform. Now these cars are running on Shoreline East. From what I hear, the employees on Shoreline East are very happy with these M8s. They're cleaner, newer, faster than the old 
diesels and push-pull consists. And they're very popular with shoreline east commuters. This is Milford, a nice tony town in New Haven County. Bridgeport and Stratford are in Fairfield County. These M8s on this section of the line operate on 12.5 kilovolt AC electrification. The shoreline east part of the line is 25 kilovolts. This track is owned by Metro North as far as New Haven, but on the shoreline east portion, that's about 99% owned by Amtrak. This is the train to New Haven. The next station is West Haven. You'll notice the catenary poles sort of take on a resemblance to the Pennsylvania Railroad catenary poles with their stems up high. West Haven was instituted a few years ago. It filled in a nine mile gap between Milford and New Haven. I plan on visiting a few trackside locations on the shoreline east. Get some M8s and some Amtrak trains. And I'll record the ride from New London back to New Haven later this afternoon and what is the scenic part of the shoreline east route shoreline east used to operate all the way to stanford during the rush hours but that was pre-pandemic since the pandemic started they're exclusively between new haven and new london <coughs> acceleration on these cars. phase gap. You'll notice the power went out briefly. The substations can only carry the circuits so many miles.
West Haven. As you leave the train, please watch the gap between the train and the platform. West Haven, Connecticut. the ticket machines on the platform. The uh, ticket machine, the only one I could access at Bridgeport, I just got off the ferry and didn't have much time, it was a daily ticket machine. I was trying to access Uniticket. That way it would allow me to buy a through ticket from Bridgeport to a Shoreline East destination. But that machine wasn't able to do it and I didn't have time to access any other machine. station building and buy a ticket. My plan is to ride it to Guilford, hang around there a couple of hours getting trains, then head over to Old Saybrook and get some more trains, eat in that Italian restaurant that's in the station, and then later take a train into London. Watch a couple of trains there before finally taking the train back on Shoreline East to New Haven and then connecting uh, to Metro North to Bridgeport and the 9 o'clock ferry back to Port Jefferson, Long Island. This is the train to New Haven. The next station is New Haven. CP271. So we're making our final approach into New Haven. We pass motor storage on the left before we arrive at the station platform. New Haven is a very busy place served by four passenger operators. Metro North, Amtrak, CT Rail, and Shoreline East. Appropriately, it's called New Haven Union Station. This station is New Haven. As you leave the train, please watch the gap between the train and the platform.
see if there's anything interesting in motor storage, like any heritage units or anything. P42105 with a consist on a Springfield train. It's got a cab car in the back, a former Metroliner. Got ACS 64 number 613. switching to Amtrak. This is New Haven State Street. All trains pretty much stop here except the some of the Amtrak. Well the shoreline trains to Boston don't. This is actually quite a great rail fanning spot in New Haven. Some Metro North trains terminate here. You got all your Shoreline East, all your CT Rail, and all your Amtrak trains going by. Yeah. 
to switch to the Amtrak radio channel. It's where Amtrak ownership begins. switching over to the 25 kilovolt system. Got off at Guilford. Train 1610 is going to head off to New London. He's creeping away. He's on a controlled siding here. He's got a stop signal up ahead. He may be waiting for an Amtrak to overtake him. 
Well, here's the Guilford station. And there's definitely controlled siding on this side of the platform here. Guilford is the longtime home of Timothy Mellon, who controlled the railroad of the same name, Guilford, which later became Pan Am. It's a nice station in a nice neighborhood. He's waiting for traffic. There's a Cell Express 2152 from Washington to Boston due to pass. It's 10.50 a.m. right now. Shouldn't be too far away. Got 2159 from Boston to Washington that's going to pass soon, too. Well, 1052, I can see 2159, a cell express, Boston to Washington coming. They can move pretty fast through here. And Shoreline East is still being skunked down there, waiting for 2152. And here he comes. Well, that engineer gave me a nice horn show. Soon Shoreline E should be pulling out of the siding. I'm gonna be here a couple hours, should see several more Amtrak trains. Well, there goes Shoreline East. That's one of the problems those trains have. They have to compete with Amtrak, and many times they lose. Well, here's the old Guilford station on this former New Haven Shoreline route. Station was torn down in 2000. Shoreline East service began on this line in 1989. This looks like a great photo spot, this station. Right on some fast triple-digit speed track for Amtrak. And the conductor was raving about those M8s. He loves them. He says they should have gotten them years ago. He's operated for 20-something years on ancient equipment, hand-me-downs from Virginia and Pittsburgh. I was wondering what was making all that noise. Amtrak shoreline between New Haven and Boston is really Amtrak's mecca for high-speed operations. Up until the other day, Trains reached their highest speed, at least the Acel Expresses did, in the Rhode Island and Massachusetts part of this line, where they can reach a speed of 150 miles an hour. But as of this past Tuesday, May 31st, the Acelas can now travel up to 150 miles an hour south of New York, between County Interlocking, south of New Brunswick, and Milepost 54, which is about just north of Trenton by Millham Tower. Tracks are numbered here, one, two, and four, right to left. Track four is a controlled siding. There's an interlocking west of the station and one east of the station. Notice the catenary poles here that lie east of New Haven to Boston. Very simple, squared off corners. Nothing like the New Haven or the Pennsylvania Railroad style catenary poles. Notice the pulleys. This provides constant tension for the catenary. Catenary is sensitive to temperature changes and that compensates for it by adjusting the tightness of the catenary so as to not cause any damage to the equipment. Note the catenary pole numbers, 88.74. Believe it or not, that measures the distance from Grand Central Terminal in New York, not Penn Station. Okay, approaching westbound at 11.34 is Amtrak 93 en route from Boston to Norfolk, Virginia. Later on behind him should be 85 between Boston and Richmond, Virginia. Out of New Haven, we pass 171 between Boston and Roanoke.
approaching at 1158 is 2154, a seller, Washington to Boston. Moving. I was told by an Amtrak track worker here that speed limit is 120 for Amtrak through here. It's one of the fastest stretches on this part of the shoreline. It gets much faster further on, like Rhode Island and Massachusetts. And approaching westbound at 1226 is Amtrak 85, en route from Boston to Richmond, Virginia. Virginia has robust Amtrak service from Northeast Corridor points. Those city sprinters doing what they do best, sprint between the cities. 1235, here comes Shoreline East train 1667, New London to New Haven. Likely with the same set of M8s I rode out here on. Four car set. Tell you one thing I notice about those M8 cars is they're probably dedicated for this service because they didn't have any third rail shoes on them. Time is 1246, approaching his train 1618 from Shoreline East, New Haven to New London. I'll ride him to Old Saybrook. We'll hang out for a few hours. Group now. We should be passing train 2163 pretty soon. A seller from Boston to Washington. Maximum speed for these M8s on Shoreline East is 80 miles an hour.
73. Boston to Washington soon too. Just got off at Old Saybrook. Next stop and last stop, New London. As I got off the train, Amtrak 173 from Boston to Washington blasted by. Soon he'll be crossing over the Connecticut River. And you'll note catenary pole 105.4. 105.4 miles from Grand Central Terminal, New York. And here's the classic old Saybrook station. Originally built in 1873. Classic structure was built by the New Haven, New York, New Haven. And this classic structure was built by the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad. Remember that railroad? Well, approaching at 112 is Amtrak 172, the route from Washington to Boston. It'll be stopping here. This new station you see with the walkway was built in 2002, as was the high platforms. short platform here at Old Saybrook. horn friendly greeting from the engineer coming and going and here's the interior of this beautiful depot One place I strongly recommend eating if you're in Old Saybrook is the Pizza Works restaurant inside part of the Old Depot. Very cheerful atmosphere and good food and service. Yeah, note the railroad motif on the photographs here. That's South Station, Boston. It's like New Haven and New York Central steam engines. This looks like Cedar Hill at the coaling tower that I saw earlier. Beautiful New Haven paint scheme, FL9, but with a K5LA horn? Come on now. A real FL9 photograph should have a Hancock air whistle on it. That's more like it. That's a New Haven FL9 stop right here at Old Saybrook. And note the Hancock air whistle on top. That's what you call a pure FL9. And upstairs in the Pizza Palace is this model railroad with a New England theme. Well, that's not a New England theme, Reading Railroad, but 
has a New Haven Railroad Jeep 9 in that fancy McGinnis paint scheme. There's another GP9. I remember those with their Hancock air whistles. Oh, here comes a, looks like an RS3 from the Boston and Maine Railroad. The Minuteman paint scheme. Pizza Palace in Old Saybrook is a great place to eat. Great service, friendly service. I had Marissa as a waitress. She was just out of this world. And I strongly recommend anytime you're in the Old Saybrook area to come eat at this place. Especially if you're a rail fan. Amtrak's Northeast Corridor is right outside. A couple of nice fallen flags. New Haven Railroad was very big here. Very popular railroad. A lot of people miss it, including moi. I love their FL9s, their EP5s, the GP9s. They were just, even those bouncy stainless steel washboard MUs. It was a busy railroad, especially between New Haven and New York. Passenger trains galore. Colorado Railroad is from one end of the upper floor to the other. See this turntable with some New Haven themed power. I think I just missed Amtrak 86. I hear it flying by outside. The New Haven painted FA and Guinness paint scheme. It was the best paint scheme the New Haven Railroad ever had. Here comes a train that transcends both layouts on the top floor here. There it goes. It's running from one end, one layout to the other on the up, up, upper floor here. Finished my lunch in time to see 2167, a seller. Boston, Washington, by at 2.40 p.m. Sitting over on track three is Shoreline East train 1673 for New Haven from New London. He came in from New London a little while ago and he's just waiting for time. He's due out of here at 2.46 p.m. And crew is waiting to leave. Shoreline East is operated by, through the auspices of the Connecticut Department of Transportation. They use Amtrak employees and they even use Amtrak ticketing for payment of fares. Now M8s are very common in Connecticut but they're a novelty here on Shoreline East. They've only been in service here for a little over a week replacing diesel trains that have toiled on this line from well as far west as Stanford and New Haven to Old St. Brook and New London since uh, the late 80s. Switching on to the main, his next stop will be Westbrook, Connecticut. Looking east, the tracks are numbered here, two, one, and three, right to left. And what's turned out to be a beautiful afternoon. All right, at 3.06, approaching is a Cell Express 2160, en route from Washington to Boston.
tell you, this part of the Northeast Corridor from New Haven to Boston is my favorite. It's not quite as busy as the New York Washington sector, but they're very fast and it's it's just an interesting railroad. Well, we're at downtown Old Saybrook. And this town definitely has a New England feel to it. Well, here in Old Saybrook is a famous road. US Route 1 runs between Fort Kent, Maine on the border with New Brunswick and Key West, Florida. This road has a lot of nicknames such as Boston Post Road in Westchester County, New York, Roosevelt Boulevard, Philadelphia, etc., etc. Safety strip. At 333 p.m. approaching is the Cell Express 2169 and route from Train Boston to Washington. Please remain behind the yellow safety strip. soon you should have 137 regional Boston to Washington he actually leaves ahead of 2169 by 10 minutes out of Boston but the Acela leapfrogs around him and route. now expected to depart at 4 34 p.m. please listen for further announcement we apologize for any inconvenience they're talking about train 174 from Washington to Boston running late which is good that means he'll get to New London after my Shoreline East train does. So while I'm there for about an hour and 25 minutes, I should see four Amtrak trains go through there. I stand corrected. 174 comes from Newport News, Virginia to Boston. Another one of those Virginia services that come up to New England. There's lots of them. I like the fact that they warn you of approaching trains Train here. approaching. Please remain behind the yellow safety strip. It's a teensy bit late. It comes westbound Amtrak 137, Boston to Washington. Train approaching. Please remain behind the yellow safe. New Haven for him. Yeah, this part of the corridor between New Haven and Boston has kind of a rural character to it. Not quite as much of a cosmopolitan feel like the New York, Washington, D.C. corridor has. There are a number of small towns the train stops at, like Old Seabrook, Westerly. Kingston's a little bigger. It's a college town. Mystic, Connecticut. Has kind of a nice little New England charm in certain places, especially along the Long Island Sound shoreline in Connecticut. Okay, approaching at 412 is Shoreline East train 1632, bound for New London. And I will be getting on this train and taking it there.
Old Saybrook. Observe crossing the Connecticut River Bridge up ahead. First time I ever rode on an M8 over the Connecticut River Bridge here. Well, first time I've done anything between New Haven and New London on an M8. Okay, right here is the Connecticut River Bridge. the real fan. Okay, just getting the highlights to get the complete ride back to New Haven later. Beautiful track, very smooth. Yeah, this is part of Amtrak's Northeast Corridor. This area right here is the parking lot for Rocky Neck State Park, which has a beachfront property along the railroad. You'll see that on the way back. isn't served by some commuter railroad. The only gap I know of, the gaps, is between Perryville, Maryland, and Newark, Delaware, and between New London, Connecticut, and Whitford Junction, Rhode Island. Okay, this area we're passing through is East Line, scenic waterfront here, and we pass over the Niantic River Drawbridge. Soon we're going to pass over the Miners Lane Railroad Crossing. It's the first railroad crossing you encounter on the corridor from Washington to Boston. You should be able to hear that M8 horn blasting away for that crossing. Up until early in that last week, you wouldn't have heard that at all.
going by blasting their horns. Unusual for M8s to be blowing their horns for railroad crossings. In addition to Miner's Lane, there are several crossings in New London that they would hop for. The only other place that M8s would blow their horns for crossings in AC mode would be the New Canaan branch. Theoretically, they could do it in DC mode on the Harlem line north of North White Plains up the southeast, but they very rarely run up there, if ever. I know they run up on the Hudson line to the shop at Harmon, but there aren't any grade crossings on the Hudson line electrification. Coming into New London. Had a schedule getting in here. He was moving right along between Old Saybrook and here. I know they're planning to have a station built in East Lyme at some point. New London, seaport city, shipbuilding city. There's a great waterfront, a nice waterfront train station and several railroad crossings that Amtrak trains blow their horns for. That's a novelty. It's the only station on the Northeast Corridor where that happens. Mystic has a crossing which is not far away from here, but it's a silent crossing. They don't blow their horns for it. This is Palmer's Cove. for our first crossing here in New London. station building there. Okay, you gotta walk out the back door here. You never know where to get off on these trains. All right, here's our train arriving in New London Union Station, which was built in 1887 right on the waterfront here, leading to the Long Island Sound. This train will be going back to New Haven at 5.05 p.m. I'll be here until 6.05 p.m. It's presently 4.38. Should get some good Amtrak action here too. And you're looking at the stately New London Union Station. So once served the New Haven Railroad or the New York, New Haven and Hartford Railroad and the Central Vermont. Central Vermont leaves off the shoreline just east of here and heads north up through Palmer, Massachusetts, Brattleboro, White River Junction, St. Albans and on up to Canada. Station is appropriately on Water Street. And there's lots of it here. And here's the beautiful New London waterfront. Over there is where you can catch ferries to Orient Point on Long Island. This is the Thames River here. Pardon me, it's the Thames River. They don't pronounce it like London's Thames River. They want to be different. Here you can also catch ferries to Block Island and Rhode Island and Seasonal and Fisher's Island which is actually part of the state of New York, the town of Southold. But there's only access to Connecticut from there, and they get their mail from the New London Post Office. And look over here, you're looking down the Thames River toward the Long Island Sound. Great view of the train station here. I mean, you can't get any more convenient. If you're getting off the boat from Orient Point on Long Island, just get right off the ferry and you're right by the railroad tracks. One time I rode the ferry up here and I jumped on a train to Boston. The well, time is 4.53. It's going to get really busy around here. Going to have a cluster of trains. Should have Amtrak 174 from Newport News, Virginia to Boston coming in first. 
followed by 175 from Boston to New York, and at 505, Shoreline East for New Haven will be departing. Seven, approaching is Amtrak 174. Let's hear that raised letter K5 LA horn. 175, I love this place. Amtrak horns. Railroad crossings and horns, like it ought to be. Friday night, a lot of people are traveling. And 174 is out at 503. Good sized train, 10 cars. Shoreline East 1683 should be departing shortly for New Haven. With Amtrak 179 waiting to come in. He's probably sitting down at Groton. Here comes Shoreline East 1683 for New Haven. Hear that unrestricted horn. not going to get out of here too quickly. He's got to hold up to let 175 run around him. 
All right, gates are going down at 513 for Amtrak 175, Boston to New York, Penn Station. These cars are tired, but they fixed them up on the inside pretty good. Looking forward to when they start getting the newer equipment with the much larger windows like they have on the Illinois services. Here comes a cell at 2174, Washington to Boston. Listen to that hybrid K5 LA. Note the catenary pole, 122.75. That's the mileage from Grand Central Terminal. They stopped running from Grand Central to Boston in the early 70s. Gotta love it. And the gates are going down at 536. This should be for uh, Shoreline East. 1634 arriving from New Haven. We'll be going out at 1687 at 605. No, this is 2173, the Acela. Pardon me. Track 2173, a cell express from Boston to New York. He obviously doesn't do any high-speed running here.
this about the time that 1634 on Shoreline East comes in from New Haven. Here comes Shoreline East, 1634 from New Haven. 542. Stopping on number one track here. sit in the station until it's time for them to go west. And arriving from Orient Point, Long Island is the MV New London. That's a 40-year-old ferry, but it's one of the fastest in their fleet. I made it from here to Orient Point in an hour and 10 minutes on that thing. It's busy by land and sea here. That ferry just arrived from Fisher's Island. That's a little ways off the coast from New London, but it's in the state of New York. I've never been there. I've been to Black Island, though. Black Island is nice. Sort of reminds me of Ireland from photographs I've seen of it. 